old at this time. All right, he's young. Young. Yeah, and, right. He did, now was he a Mason in Latvia, or he yeah. just just? Oh, he was a Mason. That okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually learned to stone to quarry the stones and and actually to finish the stones. You know, there were guys that just worked in the quarry. They beat the rocks out, but he was actually taught the uh, the art of actually finishing the blocks too. Okay, so, so he decides he's going to build Coral Castle. Where in Florida City? In Florida City, yes. And the the really strange thing, George, and and. Ed was such a man for details, and, and he. But here's the funny thing: when he was he was telling the Mosers, he said, "Look, I want some land." He didn't actually tell them about Agnes, but he said, "I'm I'm building this for my sweet sixteen." Okay, that was what he referred to Agnes. That's what because, he called her, okay. right? His sweet sixteen. He always referred to her. Well, Moser kept telling him, you know, bringing him. He knew Ed was from a, a family of farmers, so he thought, "Well, Ed wants to farm." So he took him around to these different areas where the best land was. Well, Ed always rejected it. And, and, and Ed said, well, I want to go to a, a junkyard because I want to make some tools to build my castle. And so Mosher thought, well, okay, takes him to the junkyard. Well, mm -hmm. Ed finds this old bicycle. There's no tires on it, okay? So he starts riding around Homestead in Florida City. Homestead's 10 miles from Florida City. So he's riding all around on this bicycle with no tires. So that's just on the, he's, he's, he's just on the rims. On the rims. And they called him Crazy Ed. Well, one day he ran back into Moser's office and he said, I have found the land I want. This is where it's at. It's perfect. So they, Moser goes out with him, and when, when they look at the land, Moser goes, oh, my God. He had picked the worst land in the state, George. There's three inches of topsoil there. The coil bedrock goes down 4,000 feet. <laughs> so Ed. And did Ed know that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, because he always laughed because people would say, why do you always reject the best farmland? He never would answer them. He would only smile, just keep riding his bicycle. Now, one thing that people overlook when they're telling this story is that Ed went out and cut a witching rod, okay, which you know is a, like a, in those days they'd use an old oak limb with, with a Y-shaped fork on it. And as the water, as you found water, it would, it would um, pull the for, rod. The for dowsing, right? Right, for dowsing. Uh, well, he went out, and this land that he found had water on it. And he went along and marked the lines where the water was. And this is very important. He would stick little sticks down so he had like a map of where the water lines ran. Well, this was the place where he decided he wanted to build it. So he begins building the Coral Castle after he um, after he's cured himself of TB. Well, Moser gets curious, and he rides back out to the land three weeks after Ed's there, he and his wife, on a Sunday afternoon. Well, it's hot down in South Florida. As they pull up, Ed is already watching them from the woods. No one could ever catch him at work, George. Usually he only worked from midnight till 6. Now, he was raising his first stone here at Florida City, so he's out there. He has no shirt on. When the Mosers walk up on him, there's a tripod with the chain hanging down, and in this chain is a 10-ton block of coral stone. One mistake I made last time, George, when you asked me, and I can't believe I made this mistake because I know better, but you asked me if, if the stone, if this coral rock is actually uh, limestone, and it is limestone. Mm -hmm. And it's very much related to the Great Pyramid because, as you know, the outer casing of the Great Pyramid is limestone also. Yes, exactly. Now, Sweet 16, which... Some say it was the nickname of uh, Agnes. Uh, could have been a code, could it not? There has been a lot of speculation, uh, especially of recent, that, that the Sweet 16 was a code. Um, I was actually sent some material by uh, a young man named James Comer, who's uh, uh, a movie director, and he's done some work on Superman 2 and all those. And he believes that, that Sweet 16 was a code that, um, that may have been used to hide what Ed was doing. And, uh, you know, while I don't discount any of these, um, any of these you know, ideas, uh, but I believe in my heart, George, and if you read Ed's writings, the way he talked of Agnes and the way he, when he was first doing it, um, I have to believe that Agnes existed. Now, I'm not saying that it couldn't be a code because it very likely could be, but um, because he could, a lot of times he would do two things. He would use it as a code, and he would also you know, actually have Agnes as his girlfriend because be speaking about two different things about the same time. So he was very mysterious in this way. So it's absolutely possible that it could be a code. Uh, and this code has really not been deciphered yet. It's, it's uh, in different forms, but it's not really something we totally understand yet. Well, now let's talk about the location first and foremost. Uh, ley lines, which are still hypothetical, uh, you know, are these supposed alignments of a number of different places of geographical interest 
first suggested in 1921 by an archaeologist by the name of Alfred Watkins. Mm-hmm. Did Ed Leedskull then have knowledge of these so-called ley lines, and did he pick that specific spot because of that or because the coral, the limestone? Well, I think it was a combination of both. I think he knew that the coral, the limestone was there because, you know, why he could have laid on the beach in Miami if he wanted to, uh, but instead he comes to a small, um, you know, isolated town like Florida City where the, the bedrock goes down the deepest. So he had to have known it, George. And um, if you listen to the words of, of B.J. Cathy, who's written uh, Harmonic Grid Theories, uh, Ed claimed to to know the secrets of the Great Pyramids of the of the Yucatan area, the Peru, and he also claimed, he said, I know the secrets of anti-gravity. So I'm convinced that this grid line, uh, I think that Ed had an old map that he brought with him from Latvia. But this is only pure speculation where that showed these grid lines because if, uh, I've, I've seen uh, televised pictures of B.J. Cathy's map, and it almost looks like that ley line runs from Africa, the continent of Africa, all the way across the ocean, right across through Bimini and all that, right to where uh, Florida City and Homestead intersect. So he now, had, the, had to have known that. All right, so he uses that possibly. Uh, does he construct the entire Coral Castle? In Florida City? Uh, it's almost completed. Uh, in about 1936, uh, then there's a lot of different stories. But the story that I got, uh, George, and, and we'll have to talk later on about the, the magnet machine that he, I call it the magnet machine. It's a perpetual motion holder. It uses magnets to produce electricity. Uh, he actually invented this machine, applies for a patent on it, and he's all confident that he's going to get this patent. So he actually puts the plans in a little pamphlet and starts distributing it to everybody and says, you know, don't worry about copying it because I'm going to get a patent on it. Well, the government never issued him a patent. And uh, the government sent three different times, they sent three different agents in there. Now, this was a time right before World War II. Everything was kind of, you know, people were spooky and, you know, war was coming on the horizon. Now, Ed's machine would have been very, very advantageous uh, if our army or if our, we could have had knowledge of it. So they t- sent guys in there to uh, discover Ed's secret. Well, he would not give up the secret. He said, look, I don't care who you are. This is my secret. I'm not telling you how it operates. He, he just wasn't – he didn't want to give away his secrets. Well, right after this, George, he was beaten within an inch of his life. The thugs came into Carl Castle one night. They caught him alone and almost beat him to death. Now, these people that I spoke to said, uh, well, the thugs, some people said they were looking for a treasure map. But now, Ed never had any money. Uh, when he left behind Coral Castle, he left behind, you know, hundreds of dollars, but he never spent the money. He didn't love money. He loved knowledge because he was a scientist. So uh, the idea that they actually robbed him for money, I don't think is correct. I think well, now, they were... what, whatever happened to his patent plans? Well, he, the government would, would write to him, and they'd say, well, you need to send the machine up here and let us look at it. Well, my God, it had taken him quite a long time to construct it, and he was not about to send it up there, and they knew that. Uh, they they didn't want to see the machine. They knew it had a possibility of working, uh, and so they never would. Every time he wrote to them, they'd say, well, you know, you haven't sent it to us. You haven't proven. Well, these plans are not complete. They always put him off, George. Never, okay, but, ever. But, but, but has anyone ever seen the plans that he submitted? Uh, you know, I've had several people ask me to do a patent uh, search on that, and I think that that there have been people who've tried to do a patent search on it, uh, and someone who's reported back to me said they never could find, they said it should be in the records. They said they never could find anything where that, that he had applied for a patent. So I don't know if those records got lost or, you know, stolen. Some, or stolen or just, you know, conveniently lost. So, uh, and I didn't really have time to, to, to go into the patent search, but I, I think it would be great if someone could um, check those patents out. But the thing is, he still got the plans. After he got, you know, he couldn't get the patent, he, he got frustrated. He said, well, look, I'm going to draw these plans up so, you know, you can build this. The problem is, George, the plans are so complicated. They're like Einstein's theory. Well, they're- let's talk about the machine when we come back to Joe. Now, there's so many different facets of Coral Castle that we're going to talk with Joe Bullard about tonight, author of Waiting for Agnes. Joe, let's get back to the machine again, if we can. Can you describe what it looks like? 
Yes, George. It would be about the size, um, I would say, what we're here in the south, we used to use an old wash tub to wash our clothes with, so, uh, or a 